Hello everyone, this is GT Time. I'm your moderator, Kyle Bossman, and joining us as always is our uniquely talented and knowledgeable panel, including Brandon Jones. Who has a very soft touch. Daniel Moore. No. Hello. And the super thing this week, Brad Ellis. Hello. And making this all happen in the booth, Ian Hink. Hi. You got me all out of sorts with that one, Brandon. Uh, hi everybody, how are we doing? Uh, Brad? A new rotation has started. Ooh, yeah. actually, I have to report for Ben, who sure, couldn't yeah, be here yeah. today. He does have a best animal. Hmm. His his best animal is the penguin. Good animal. When asked why that's his best animal, he says, because when they slide on their belly, I smile like nothing else. It makes me smile like nothing else could. One of Kojima's first games was about a penguin. Hmm. Oh, it must be like that. Penguin adventure. Uh, so that is the the end of that chapter of everyone of everyone's best animals. Close the book. Opening an, opening a new book today. Yeah. Brad Ellis. Would you rather be a new Power Ranger or a new Ninja Turtle? This is a very weird question to me. Would I rather be a new Ninja Turtle, so a deformed five foot turtle? Or well, a Power Ranger who has their own robot and can do rad kung fu. You're talking a, a new series or an additional character? N you would be the new. You would be the. You would join the team. I'd see. I don't think you just get to be a turtle. This is a poorly phrased question. So it's like Machiavelli, yeah. the this new turtle. Very, that yeah, like my Casey knew he had. like my Casey Jones in this. You or may, my, or you like? You could be. Yeah, because you're Brad Ellis. So I could be a still character in that universe. Yeah. Here's the thing. But I, Casey was never a ninja turtle. though. So here's what we would allow him. We would allow you one canister of ooze. <laughs> and you can you can also pick any animal you, you could can actually pick feasibly. Your best animal to okay. touch. You could well you can feasibly have access to and then you can join so the So he'll ninja be a turtles. ninja dog. If he chose if I chose, yeah. yeah. That could be cool. But I'm picking Power Ranger. Okay. You get a megazord. You get a megazord. And like some crazy robot weapon, like a sword or an axe or something like that. Yeah. It's the best. They go going like outer space and, and you can fight flip stuff. like thirty feet. Yes. In the air. Yeah. Yeah. You can get to fight those dumb putty guys Constant or whatever. Snap zoom. Sure. Yeah. The Ninja Turtles oh, don't absolutely. have any of those things except for maybe Foot Clan's close to putties. They've got the mm. van. Was there a name to like the place that they all hung out at, like the restaurant? I want to oh, think. Yeah. I want to say the Peach Pit. But that was nine hundred two one zero. And it's not the Max. That's I feel saved like by the bell. With an R. Yeah. Can I be in the original Power Ranger universe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. With yeah, like you, Zordon. You get to choose any Rangers. era. Yeah. Like that one. Okay. But you still have to be Brad Ellis. That's cool. Okay. So that's what you pick. Yeah. Yeah. Great answer. Wait. Wait. What, what? what color would you be? Oh, right? great. Or Ranger. What yeah. What color is there not? In the originals? Yeah. Uh, there's no orange. Orange. Yeah. I was just gonna say orange. Hmm. Uh, there's no brown Ranger. There's no brown Ranger. Brown Char Chartreuse. You could cut. No purple Ranger. Dibs on purple. On purple. I don't know. Don't be shy. Go Brown's for pretty cool. I feel like brown is like a ninja color. Could yeah, be, it is. You absolutely. Could be candy stripes. Or you could be candy yeah, no, 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 no. You could We're be doing solid Ranger. colors only. <laughs> okay. All Rainbow right. Ranger. We're not getting too like crazy pastel colors or anything. So like Brad that. joins the team. He's the brown ranger. Yeah. Do you have a choice for your weapon as well? Oh, uh, weapon. Yeah. Um. Let's see. What's pretty cool? Like maybe nunchucks. Those are pretty rad. Yeah. I don't think they're all have, like teched out. Yeah. I don't think anyone has nunchucks, right? Yeah. That's Laser shoot out of the ends. Yeah. 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 Okay. And for my, it's an animal, right? They're a Megazord, or is it dinosaur? They were mostly dinos. Oh man, is there a raptor one? No raptors yet. To do raptor. That was <laughs> okay. pretty sweet. Cool, cool, cool. All right, great. <laughs> that went. Great. We never get to answer these, which is tragic. Fine. Yeah, but you get, to, cool with it. you get to be here every episode is the idea. Like everybody hears from you every single week. Sure. We only yeah. hear from Brad once every one and a half yeah. months. You know. That's true. Yeah. Uh, let's uh, <laughs> let's start corrections. Begin corrections music, please. Uh, here's one. This is from um, Anders Uhland. We, we talked about solid state drives. Uh, Anders or Anders? Maybe Anders. I guess that would be the mm. right way to say that. My Anders is like my upstate. Anders. Right there. Yeah. <laughs> hey there. <laughs> uh, uh, last week, Blair was bragging about his solid state drive in his PS4. Uh, we have some facts about this. Oh, here we go. The PS4 only uses SATA 2, so a solid state drive only improves loading time so much. If it had SATA 3, you'd see huge improvements. Uh, a solid state hard drive hybrid drive is probably a better mix of improved loading times, size, and price. So there you have it. So wrecked Blair. Well, kind of. Get wrecked, Blair. <laughs> <laughs> Anders is just here to give us good advice. Thank you, Anders. Uh, we never mentioned Mega Man Universe when we were talking about uh, last week. And Mega Man Universe is really interesting. That was a canceled game. Mm -hmm. um, that was, it was basically, it was going to be Mario Maker. Mm -hmm. Had Ryu in it. Yeah, it even had the rule where you have to beat your level to upload it. Mm -hmm. It had all of those things. And then it was canceled. Looks like Nintendo copied that a little bit. 
it, they might. I what mean, if they it, were solely responsible for it being canceled? <laughs> Conspiracy. Yeah, maybe. I gotta blame Inafune big time. Oh, yeah. It's all him. He's <laughs> absolutely Inafune. <laughs> it also looked ugly, which didn't help it. It did look so ugly. Very disgusting looking. Yeah, do yourself a favor. Look at that trailer. Look at the footage of it. They all, they I didn't mean, look if like... it looked like 8 bit Mega Man, that yes. would have been so much better. Like, You're people would have been on top of that thing. Yeah, it yes. was like the Mega Man box art Mega Man on some of that. He looked hideous. He was one of the characters you could get. Yeah. And oh. But, like, he had, like, weird. Eyes. Their face was like deformed. It just I mean, wasn't right. It was, it was not right. It, 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 yeah, and that's why it was canceled. Uh, the end corrections music. That's it. That was moderate. That was very good. Yeah, we did okay last nice week. Nice. We were pretty accurate. Uh, let's get into news. <laughs> okay. Let's get into we're, news. This is what we're leading with this week. This is our news this week. <laughs> is that Tony Hawk? Tony Hawk's Pro Skater Five is not pro. Nice. Uh, this game is. Uh, <laughs> do you like that title, Brad? Yeah, it's great. This is. Uh, it, it turned out to be a, a real stinky clunker. We, when it was first shown, we that was the episode. We like the, the title of the show was Tony Hawk's Pro Skater Five already looks bad, <laughs> and I think Blair gave me a hard time, just like that's not fair, man. That's not fair. And look here, here we are. Same with Huber. The game is out. Yep, Huber also. Huber defending. was very upset. Yep, here we are. The game looks bad, and it is bad. It's not fun. I only saw two professional reviews so far. One was a three and the other was a four. Yeah. Yikes. Uh, U.S. Uh, Gamer gave it a five. I no looked one, at that. No one else was bothering. Oh yeah. Brief, we're not, uh, you know. Brief uh, return. Uh, it's difficult to say, but Antonio's seems to be the most frequent occurrence of a named pizza parlor in t- uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> you, uh, you mean uh, uh, Power Rangers? We need Power Rangers. Oh. I thought we wanted Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. No, I'm no, not no, being no. some he, weird he wanted, deformed he wanted monster. to be a Power Ranger. And so <laughs> no, I was no, trying no, no. To you out. asked which restaurant was in, in Power, Power Rangers. Rangers. I might have said Turtles. We, oh. need the, we need the Power Rangers one. We need to know where Brad's going to yeah, be hanging out. Because they all, they well, all hung out it somewhere. Is one, one other interesting laser. fact. In one of the Turtles things, uh, <laughs> they were in Taking Pizza Hut. Their couch was made out of Pizza Hut boxes. Yeah, that's true. Oh, wow. Legitimate. Yeah, they had a cool crossover. Brand tie-in. So wait, we want another restaurant from... Power Rangers. Power Rangers. Rangers. All right. Yeah. Uh, give Season me a one. Okay. Give me a minute. Yeah. Maybe it has some sort of Angel Grove aspect into it. You know, it's like angels. Because that's where they yeah. would hang out with the guys yeah, yeah. with the leather jackets, like the bad guys. Yeah. Like, they they both They'd both yeah. be in there at the same time. Yeah. Eyeing each other down. You'd have to deal with those guys. Yeah. Brown Ranger. Easy. And eventually, like, are chumps. Bulk and Skull, I think, are in this series longer than anyone. Oh, they rode that out. Yeah. Maybe. They're cool guys. Uh, but. <laughs> cool guys. What do, we, what do we learn from Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5? Here's what the segment should be called: t- "Talk Me Down," because I'm mad. <laughs> I'm very, very mad about this game. I'm mad that Activision would charge sixty dollars for it. I'm, I'm mad they would do this with the game. I'm mad. I'm even mad they would give Robomoto another chance. These are the people who made both of the the ride games, and for some reason, Activision says, "Oh yes, we should give them Tony Hawk's Pro Skater Five. They got this." I'm furious. I'm not. I'm still not at all sure why they decided they had to be five. I couldn't have just been like another ride or someone, downhill. They would sell Absolutely. so much more. You know, they're like, "This is it. It's time. Everybody's yeah. doing it. Yeah, These comebacks are so big this year, and they are. Let's do it." And it worked for most Shenmue of the games. Shenmue three, Tony Hawk five. Well, I mean, it got announced before then, but yeah. Uh, um, what I want to know is, was this something that it got along to this point, kind of like the the, the make or break moment where they decide, like, do we delay it and then add more time onto it to fix it, or you know, where, where's Tony Hawk at right now? And then a bunch of executives played it and were like. Let's just, just, just release it, it's you know, and like, and like, let's not tell anybody. Let's not send out review copies. Yeah. Like, just, just release it. Or our executives like, oh, it's bad. It, really, it's not. I don't know. Did you play Bill? Like, I don't know. Like, were they oblivious? No, you're right. Just because like, we, uh, nobody did get review copies. That's a huge indicator. I'm sure everyone yeah. knew. And Activision knew it was bad. Yeah, I'm sure they all knew. Um, which, yeah, why, why not know going into it that like this, this had to be. It didn't have to be good. I mean, no game has to be good. You know, it's like if a bad game is a bad game, but like mm-hmm. it is Tony Hawk Five. Like it is one of the great. If you're gonna make a top 100 list, like a Tony Hawk game's gonna be somewhere on there. Like this is one of like those cherished franchises and games that you made the decision to bring back for no reason whatsoever. It's like Rock Band. You know, it's like it's like oh, okay, you, this is the year. Go for it, guys. If you really are confident, you know, like they were. But and they are, yeah. It was like not enough. Whatever. Whatever oomph they put behind it was just not enough. It's Ugh. it's killing me. It's killing me. Like Brad, you've played it. You, uh-huh. you sat down and played it. Uh-huh. This game is less than Tony Hawk's Pro Skater Four. There is less in this game than that game had. Oh, I didn't even play Tony Hawk Four. Like how crazy is that though? It's very bare bones and just 
boring. Just modes and characters. The game's and just boring, man. Stuff bumps so, me out. So yeah, here's the way it works: is a level, uh, a skate park, mm -hmm. has missions inside of it, and for you to accept a mission, you need to, you need to pass a certain amount of missions to collect enough stars to unlock the next venue. The thing is, when you start a mission, you have a loading screen. Mm -hmm. You leave the skate park for a moment. You see a giant loading screen that says Tony Hawk's Pro Skater Five. And then you load into that mission and only that mission. Just to make it sting more. It's just yeah, but yeah. then, as soon as you start moving, then it like, oh, here's the mission. Like, it kind of like interrupts you. Yes. And then repositions you. Mm -hmm. And then you start. And then when you're done with the mission, again, you do the whole loading thing and everything. Yes. <laughs> It is unbelievable. Reloading the exact same level you're in over and over mm -hmm. and over And there were some really broken games released in 2014, but like, it was still possible to play through and actually not experience a lot of it. You know, it's just kind of like a give or take, whether it's like, oh, did you get glitches? Yeah, I, I had a big, I had like gameplay glitches or story-based glitches and stuff. You cannot play this game without immediately, you know, within the first 10 minutes, just like flying all over the place or like having your character get jammed into something. I don't something. think that's true. That didn't happen to me, it didn't really. really. to us, yeah. Uh, yeah. I've just that's seen, I, I've seen so many videos yeah, yeah. as opposed to like, there's usually like that one person that really goes and tries to dig for glitches where it's just, it seems like every, every we, web, if you are a major video uh, game website, you have a montage of I, things going wrong. I have information. We have an update. Pizza okay. joint here. All right. So here's one thing that there is a character apparently named Piggy, which was some sort of monster that uh, uh, had a, a diner called Piggy's Diner, possibly Piggy's Cafe, mm -hmm. um, which mostly served things like rotten eggs, weak old sandwiches, and sewer water, thing, monster food. But he tried to stop giving the rangers information because to his customers, they were monsters. Humans are monsters. They yeah, scare them. absolutely. But I believe what you are all thinking of is probably the Angel Grove Youth Center which is also sometimes referred to as the gym and juice bar. Yeah. Sounds right. Because uh, that's where they all would meet up, and there's, like, karate classes and yes. competitions and crap. <laughs> so it's probably the youth center that you guys are Sweet. thinking Sweet. Great. Excellent. Not technically Excellent. a restaurant. Hanging out at the youth center. So Brad will be hanging out at the youth center. Eating pizza and doing karate. i got to say I really like Piggy's Diner. Sounds cool. <laughs> yeah, it's good eggs. lore. That's cool so lore. that is good lore. You're right. Who knew Power Rangers Piggy had is that? Power Rangers would be so key too. for Lego Dimensions. How great would it be to have a little Power Rangers area? Oh yeah. yeah. Go to the bar and. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Know, everybody, just saying. Just saying. Just saying. <laughs> WB, make it happen. Oh, dude, and like building a Megazord, like yeah. having a Megazord set. Be sweet. Oh, that'd be sweet. <laughs> Moving on. Okay. I'm not, um, not quite ready to thing, move on yet, because that'd be but, so... Okay, no, yeah. no, no. We'll get back in Tony Hawk 5. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just... It's it's so insulting for so many reasons. It's so obviously bad. Everybody can can say that. Like, it's a popular franchise. It was an announcement that came out of nowhere. Um, how long did was the development time for this? Do we know? Like, We don't. I bet it was no. not very long. When was this? Yeah. What, was it like a year ago that we found out about this? No, it wasn't. No. It was... It was well, I mean, we found out about it from the leak, but, like, when did they, you know... When did they actually officially make an announcement? But it wasn't a year ago. It was quite recent. Yeah. Um, I, I, I bet development started soon after Tony Hawk HD. You know, they released that oh, sure. as a digital-only game. I bet they started working on this pretty soon after that. So I think that would be around two years. Hmm. Uh, but when we actually learned about it just a couple of months ago, really. Yeah, it was before E3. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's just... It's so undercooked. It is not up to our expectations of what a current gen $60 game is. Yeah. Uh, if it was $20, I'd have been way more on board. Yeah. Like 20 bucks, I'd be like, all right, even if it's bad, I'll play it. But at the same time, if it's <clears> 20 bucks, <throat> that's what you call Tony Hawk skaters sure, or something. Whatever, you know, it's man. like, yeah. but if you're, you know, so it's, it's one thing if Capcom makes some like, Stupid um, Resident Evil shooter, you know, yeah. you're like you know, lassoing like zombies around and stuff. And we're just like, whatever, okay, it's just this weird like, umbrella game. We can forgive that. But if it's Tony Hawk Five, I saw some people saying I that they you. made it just to keep the license of Tony Hawk alive. With oh, Activision. weird, because you know how they did that like sure. Spider-Man movies. So that could be why they did it. Oh god, they might not even care. Or the Wheel of Time movie that they made literally in a week and a half that aired at like <laughs> five in the morning. On some crazy channel, Do you just, just to keep the license, just to keep the license. Yeah, That's I think awesome. it was Wheel of Time. Yeah, what are the yeah? What are the definition is, is for a video game? Like, I what's mean, the what's the smallest yeah. thing you could ever do to just get a one or something from? Well, reviewers? some of those licenses are weird too because it's like they're very platform specific, etc. So I'm just I'm so mad that people are are buying it that that people are selling this game and that people have to buy it and then and have that. Nobody has to buy it. Uh, you don't have to buy it. We have a question actually from at Backlog Crusader. Can such a big franchise after two horrible games be salvaged or should Tony Hawk be forgotten? It can be salvaged with a good game. game. Yeah, totally. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I do think that. I think yeah. any franchise could be salvaged. 
Because it's not like, this is not a franchise where it's like, this is not like the 3D era where you're wondering, like, how would that series update itself? Like, what what would Tony Hawk have to do to be fun in this era? And it's just like, just be fun. Just, just you know, like, don't break all the time and, and have, you know, a, a, like mission objectives be more fun. Like, have the actual, you know, activity of exploring this environment be something I, that's uninterrupted that I'm constantly yeah. doing. Don't ground pound when you grind. Don't do well, that. They need to give that developer money. It looks like they didn't give him much resources. Like, look at the game. It looks sure. like a PS2 game up res, pretty much. I think they didn't give him that much support with the game. I it bet that team that really tried on that game. In trying to figure out when this game was announced, I discovered that they are working on fixes for the game, like Activision oh. said sure. a couple hours yeah, the, ago. The day one patch was bigger than the game, wasn't it? Yes, yeah. it was big. It was, it was very big. <laughs> really it was like weird. four gigs for the game and then seven gigs for the patch. Yeah. I, oh. Mm, Brad, I think RoboMoto's had enough chances. I'm not. I would not. I mean, yeah. Game. I mean, it's it's a bummer. But I really feel like, I feel. I just feel bad for that team. I feel like they're trying so hard, but they don't sure. have the right resources. Here's the thing, though. When people are bad at something, you shouldn't pay them to do it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. Obviously. I mean, they good could idea, be bad. Ian. They're, I'm just <laughs> trying to fired. play devil's oh, advocate here. It's about time. I mean, it could be bad, or they there's could things that you can't. Bad. I mean, you can fix collision. You can't fix the level designs being yeah. boring and flat. Right. That's true, yeah. Oh my gosh. Look at like the, the chromatic aberration on this screenshot alone. Look at the left side of that building. We just have like a, a full inch of yellow just hanging off the side because like <laughs> it's just oh, no. they had to they had just had to put on some weird filter to make it look bearable. You know, they yeah. they gotta start from scratch on their next Ooh. game. It's, uh, I don't know. I absolutely think it could be salvageable. I'm not sure if it could be salvage salvageable from RoboMoto. They should change their studio name. Just change the name for us. Change it to yeah. Neversoft. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. But I know people that were disappointed with SSX when that got a reboot, and I loved it. And, like, you know, that compared to this. What was right. that called? Oh, man. It's just, just called SSX. When did this happen? I don't remember this. This was yeah. Deadly Descent, and then they chopped off Deadly Descent to just name it SSX, but mm. it still kind of was. Mm. You know, yeah. it's still kind of serious. Still about that wasn't descent. current gen, was it? That was last yeah. gen, right? Yeah. Oh, if that got a next gen upgrade. Wait, so what are we, are we talking? Like, Xbox 360? That's what it was. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. And I played on PS3 just for the controller, just because I had the SSX yep. on, that, on that PS3. You had a hard wire. shock for consistent. Yeah, nice. The only way to do it. All right. Uh, that's, I don't want to talk about that game anymore for any longer. Uh, well, we're going to talk about it more tomorrow. What does that mean? We're going to get people together and sit down and talk about the uh, game itself. Okay. Look forward to it just played. If you want to hear more trashing on Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5, it's coming. There are good things. There are totally good things. What? I, I like the thing where you're uh, picking up marshmallows in your mouth and no, your head no. gets bigger. <laughs> Some of the skaters on that are pretty legit. Yeah. Like we Andrew are going to have a separate cool. video. We don't have to recap what it will be. Great. <laughs> uh, Call of Duty Black Ops 3 has no campaign on PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. Officially last gen. I guess we call them last gen on the show now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. This might be why. This might be a reason why we just call it last gen. Like, okay. Yeah. This is this is pretty a sure. hard cutoff. Yeah. If you buy that game, it's $50. There's there's still zombies. You still got your zombies. You still got your mu multiplayer. There's no campaign. There is a download for Black Ops One included digital download for that. Oh, weird. Why? Just to add value to it, because I'm I'm assuming they probably just put the campaign in. Add value that way. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. It well, be but worth it's a, it. But it's a code. It's not yeah. actually on the disc. It's just like they they don't. Here, here's this Black Ops game. You probably have. If you're buying Black Ops Three, you probably play Black Ops to death. Sure. This sounds like a space issue, right? Like, it's not like, it doesn't cost them money to Probably put like, the information on the disc. It's just that, like, all of that content, it's like, you gotta pay. Right. It may I be bet a it's like a processor and, like, the machine isn't strong enough to have yeah. all those buildings falling over. Yeah. Is that why, is that why, why did they say it's out? Uh, they, they made a lot of, like, nice sounding ex excuses. You know what I mean? They're, they're just like, as we move forward, we have grander visions of where Call of Duty is going. And I, I actually like it. I like the decision because like we always complain about compromises. Now Call of Duty is as good as it can be on. What's I'm not buying about? it. Why? I ain't buying it. <laughs> I'm not buying that. It's the first they time made that. that. It's the first time the campaign has been four player co-op. Who cares? Make it one player then. Just make the campaign playable. That's just not what they wanted to do. Yeah. I mean, should they just not put it out on last gen? Um, I don't think they can afford that yet. I think that's like so ingrained into how Call of Duty makes money. Because yeah. it'll still sell um, like crazy. Yeah, I think that's I think that's just 
unavoidable, you know, and they were like, we don't want the scores to be bad because this campaign just sucks. It just, it's like the 360 like, I can't, I'm trying guys. I can't do it. Yeah. There's four players then and don't all this put stuff it on happening. Last gen. Um, you think it's campaign or nothing at all? Yes. Make the campaign. But I campaign think people is like a, buy these games don't give a crap about the campaign. Yeah, okay. I gotta agree with Ian on that. One. Uh, I don't play I Call of Duty of like, like at all. But if I do play Call of Duty, I'm yeah. playing the campaign, and that's it. It's me too, actually. That's it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I yeah, I'm not that severe with just like just doing campaign, but I love the campaign. Like those, that's that's probably one of my favorite things about Call of Duty. But I mean, games. if you're if you're looking at this as like a money thing, someone who like someone like you just plays the campaign. Like, sure, they got the game. You bought the game. You know. But like if you if you're someone who plays like multiplayer like crazy, you're buying map packs, you're buying all the other stuff. Like mm-hmm. you're a, you're a continuing revenue source. Yeah. So like, yeah, that's and, where and, the and, and, and I mean, there's no question a way bigger yeah, yeah. audience. And, and you have to. Here's the thing though. Like, Call of Duty is one of the few franchises that actually made sure they put majority of their games on the Wii. Like. Mm-hmm. I mean, you would talk about a downgrade. That is crazy. You know, you yeah. know, taking it from the 360 and putting it on the Wii, yeah. you know, and uh, you know, and they had to sort some things out with uh, the development teams before Modern Warfare finally came over. But after that, then it was, you know, there was a companion version, Wii version, and there was a fairly strong community, you know, in comparison c- comparatively. Um, so yeah, it's it's interesting to see that this time around, like, yeah, I don't know if it was a a budget thing or a time thing i think it's probably more of a time thing like you could do it but then who are you going to give it to and how well is it going to get done in time um and they didn't want to deal with having a tony hawk like situation Activision on the 360. has yeah. the resources to get it done if they want to get it done yeah there's well, no i mean i don't care i don't know exactly all what they said why there isn't i haven't read that but just from what you told me they could have made it happen it is. I mean, Activision is is the same publisher who put out Tony Hawk's Pro Skater yeah. Five. Yeah. They've got resources, but the reason they're huge is they don't blow them. The reason they're huge is they put out like five games a year. You know, they make it real particular. You know, they they just put all their money into Destiny. And I mean, going. and it could be almost a backhanded way of saying, okay, everybody, just just buy the new systems. It was. Yeah. If the you next read the, one's not then be just on don't the put it out on current yeah. gen. Right. I don't. Know, I mean, I honestly, I think next year is going to be the exact same thing. There's still like even if you're still gonna sell one million two years from now on Xbox 360. Yeah, they will. I feel like you know what I mean. I I think this is their plan going forward. Because you think about it, like there are like like I don't know, like maybe a dozen games, like dozen really popular franchises that are still supporting last gen. Yeah. It's usually like sports, heavy AAA action and family. Yeah. And like you know if you add up like yeah a dozen games it's like the, i think the market for people that are still going to buy that stuff are people that only play like five or six games a year mm-hmm. so they're still yeah um i should say for the sake of news there's two other things that won't be in the last gen versions of this game uh there's a paint your weapons mode where you can paint your guns for in oh multiplayer. wow that's <laughs> really cool breaker that's a, that's really cool in that's Black next Ops, gen can, only that can only handle wait the next are you gen. being facetious right now no it's cool there's the, the, the customization in black ops 3 is really neat what makes it neat um, you can, every single upgrade that you can have for your gun, there's two different versions of everything. If there's an object, there's two different ways that can look. So you can have like, oh, I want to have this version, and then you can paint it and have a logo and rotate it. And it's kind of like Forza, where you can just like, okay. really like make a customized okay. thing, and then save that and give it to your friends. So like or like how everything in my MGS5 is pink. Yep. Yeah. All my guns, my base, my helicopter. It's the best. I made white base. I, yeah, you're right. It is cool. You can change the color of your base. They couldn't put that on last gen. They couldn't. Are do you it. serious? They couldn't make the paint work. My God. And then here's I don't the, even know what to say to that. Here's the other thing: is there's esports features as well that won't be on the older versions. Hmm. Like and I guess what? sure. I'm not sure what the esports features are. I think spect- spectating. I think it's all okay. like spect- hmm. spectator stuff, where like you can watch a match. Sure. And, like, I mean, I, I would buy that more over than not having skins in the game because they can't handle it. <laughs> they can't handle Especially it, Especially when there's only multiplayer. Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> That's unacceptable. It's, it's cheaper. It's For ten, like it's the biggest cheaper. game in the industry. That is unacceptable. That's, yeah, $10 cheaper. That's yeah. what their campaign is worth. I was going to say, <laughs> that's funny that that's what they value the campaign at. Yeah, that is funny. Which I think actually is probably accurate because I think that the majority of their fan base... Yeah, no question. Doesn't yeah. care. But or, they, you they, know, I mean, you blow through those campaigns in a night or two. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they're so expensive, though. They put a ton, a ton of money on it. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, I, yeah. and, and I'm, yeah. I'm a little nervous about the campaign this time because it is four-player co-op that it's yeah. just kind of like that, like, you know, um, 
I'm trying to think, not uh, Left 4 Dead, but uh, not Dead Rising, but Dead Island. How it was like, you're not one people, you're four people. Like you just, I was just playing that single player, and I'd show up, and like there's four people that are like in the cinema. I'm like, oh, where are okay. these people? These people weren't here. Yeah. You know, so I, like, I'm, I'm wondering if it's kind of distant that way, where it's like I don't really feel like I'm a soldier in the Call of Duty universe, like I usually do. It's just like I feel a little like kind of a, a separation between myself mm. and the storytelling. Yeah. Um. So I wonder, yeah, if they were just like, eh, where this, the campaign is not testing well. Let's just focus like last gen. I mean, you know, to play Devil's Advocate, if you if you are primarily only playing on a 360 and PS3, and you do not, you know, if you do not want to or are not able to upgrade, you know, I I just think they they're not going to spend money on. It. I really think yeah. they had, they had that meeting. They went they went bit by bit, and they were like, if we have the whole team doing the custom customization thing. Do we really want them to take a whole month to add this thing? You know, if it was when, cheaper, like, I wouldn't be as mad about it. It is cheaper. If it was cheaper, than no, oh, then yeah. fifty. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. If it was like thirty or even forty, I'd be like, oh, okay, fine. Yeah, but fifty? Come on, man. They can't give this sort it out. For free, Brad. Sort it out. They gotta eat. Activision's gotta, gotta eat. eat. Oh Activision eats God. the most. <laughs> <laughs> Once you get used to foie gras, you can't really, you know. <laughs> can't Activision go back. eats the most. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, last time I went to Treyarch, they were looking real hungry, Kyle. Yeah, they were a real hungry team. They probably are. Um, you know, just because they were working too hard. The, putting those games out isn't easy. Uh, Twisted Pixel this week became an independent studio once more. Mm -hmm. That was they were not owned by Microsoft for long. I think it was two or three years. Uh, those were like the worst years for them to be owned by Microsoft. Who, who are they? <laughs> yeah. Are okay. They? So who are they? Blood and what? Why are those the worst years? <laughs> um, they made the Mall was the first one I remember of, yep. and then they did Explosion Man and Miss Explosion Man. Yeah, and great games. And then I think that's when they got acquired. Yeah, and then Loco Cycle was, and, and Loco Cycle went through like all these weird transitions between previous gen and this gen, and, mm -hmm. uh, and then it ended up just being like a really not good offensive game. It was offensive. offensive. <laughs> it was like, it was. I don't want to be like I don't want to be uptight, but it was sometimes like straight racist. It's like, hey, come on, dudes. Uh, well, I mean, this is from a company who made a game called Miss Explosion Man. Like yeah. she's her own explosion person. Well, what about <laughs> she doesn't have to be defined? <laughs> Do you get this upset about Miss Pac-Man? No, it it's yes, a reference to Miss Pac-Man. Pac it was that's totally ridiculous. a reference. Um, um, that's ridiculous too. The the two games we didn't talk about are Gunstringer and Comic Jumper. Those, oh, those Gunstringer are also, is interesting. God, Comic Jumper, I don't think I ever played, but I think I, mm, I think I might remember it. This seems like a D tier company. So that's my first question: is, is like, is this a big story? You know what I mean? I, no, because I. Uh, I feel like Twisted Pixel is a company that gets talked about a lot, and I think it's their sense of humor. Mm -hmm. I think it's that is the thing that why they're unique, and because of their weird cutscenes where they put themselves in it, they shoot a lot of live action stuff. Even for Explosion Man, if you get to the end, you see like a lot of weird live action things yeah, they going have on. Fun. Yeah, and I think like that makes them unique. Uh, are they underrated or overrated? Brandon, go ahead. Um, I mean, they were overrated by Microsoft, you know. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. dang. Uh, it, w it was m not the right company to bring in to do the projects that Microsoft is working on. And maybe they, maybe they know that. They're just like, I think we would do better. I think it's an interesting story if there's a thing that they want to do. If we just get another, a bunch of string of weird games from them mm -hmm. and they kind of keep, you know, you know, on par for what they've been producing recently. But if they like launch a big Kickstarter or, do, you know, like announce some big new project they, that they want to work on that they were just like, do wasn't we, right for Microsoft. We pitched it to Microsoft. They, didn't, they weren't interested, so we left. Do we know that they left or Microsoft kicked them? We don't know. Uh, we do know from their press release that they're excited. They talk about working on new platforms as well as X, Xbox One. They're still going to work with sure, Microsoft yeah. in the future. Uh, they've been working apparently on like a pretty serious game. Hmm. There's like concept art in a uh, local cycle of their next game. I think it might be like an RPG, like a pretty serious RPG is what they've been working on. I wonder if it just wasn't panning out. I don't know what was going on with them. It happens, yeah. It happens. Phantom Dust 2. This, where's Phantom Dust 1 and still has, oh, there, there's the first one on Xbox. Source uh, subject. Source subject. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think it's cool. I think it's cool they bought themselves out. It's not Microsoft Shutter's Twisted Pixel. It's yeah. Twisted Pixel is independent again, and you know yeah. we don't get to say that a lot, and so I'm, I'm happy they, for them. They can do what they want now. I don't know what their relationship was like, but yeah. more freedom, it, I guess, for it them. It sounds like they're, yeah, they're keeping all their properties, so that's good. Oh, cool. really? That's yeah. part of their deal? Cool. Mm -hmm. That is all right. So we'll probably see any, an announcement for Explosion Man again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean those games were definitely fun and and you know good platformers, but uh, but yeah, I, I didn't I didn't play a lot of the other ones. Yeah, I, Comic Jumper was pretty grody. 
I was pretty stoked for it. Yeah, it's a grody game. It is. Uh, <laughs> it's not great. Gunstringer though, I think was a cool example of like this was when Microsoft was really pushing the Connect, and oh, it was right, like, yeah, that here's a Connect game that's not as lame as our other Connect games. You right. know, it had that going on for it. And I think that's why Twisted Pixel was picked up. Mm. So it made a pretty good Connect game. A yeah. One. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And they needed that, and yeah, now they don't need that. They're not making any more Connect games. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Man. So. That might be part of it. I'm not sure. But yeah, good for you. Good for you, Twisted Pixel. Stay indie. Cool. Yeah. Uh, map editor added to Gran Turismo 6? Um, well, I, I think that it may have already had a map editor. This is a new app. Right. Which uh, I watched the video. It's actually pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so you can just do everything on yeah, you know, iPad, iPhone, or whatever. Or maybe, is it just iPad? They don't only show the iPad. You can use an iPhone as well. But yeah. it ever seems like it'd be really small. Yeah. Uh, one of the things I thought was cool is that like you can like take a photo of a of a like a line or whatever of a track, a map or something like that, and then like trace over it and then alter it if you want. Ooh, so like while I'm at lunch, I could do I could like draw what I think yeah, would yeah. be a cool track, and then trace over it in the app. Yeah, you can just like take Wait, a photo and then trace you have over to the trace photo. over it yourself. Why doesn't the app just trace the line itself and put a road on it? Uh, I don't know. It ain't that simple. Lazy. Well, here's what's crazy is that it's not lazy because this game came out in December of 2013. Yeah. This is a PlayStation Whoa. 3 game. Why? Why? It's like, is that ma- are that many people still playing Grand Trees mode? Yeah, yeah. That's that crazy. was my question. Blood says yes. That's yeah, crazy. They, they've been they've been putting out content. It, you know, like it hasn't been getting big news headlines or anything like that. But they've hmm. been putting out Vision uh, GT cars and stuff like that from various manufacturers. And uh, explain everybody everybody what a Vision GT car is. So basically, they partner sh- partnered with a bunch of uh, you know different manufacturers like Mercedes, etc. Uh, for them to basically create these dream concept cars and put them in the game, stuff that they wouldn't have the funds to build, uh, but would just be you know fun to experiment and, and show off. Oh, so none of the cars actually exist in real life. Right. Oh, okay. Well, that's kind of exciting in a weird sci-fi way. Yeah. So it's, it's, they get their, those engineers involved to, to make some cool little things, and they've been doing them. Did they make regular since launch? Did they make any like future cars, like the one that Will Smith drives in iRobot, where the tires are spheres so the car can just go sideways? I always thought that was cool. Uh, I don't think they have anything weird with the wheels, but the the first one that was there at uh, at launch was actually pretty future looking. Yeah, I remember that one. It was uh, it was the that Homer. day one update. You had to download that mm-hmm. thing. The Homer would be cool if they added that to any serious <laughs> racing game. Heck yeah. I wonder, it would go really slow. It would go 35 miles per hour. Yeah, uh, and then explode. Do you think it's fair that you need a smart device, though, to, like, use this? Yeah, because, like I said, I mean, I'd have to research, but I'm pretty sure they already had a track editor in there. I think this is it, Blood. I think this is the announcement of the track editor. Check the tape. We guess we've got to check the tape. Check uh, yeah. the tape, Ian. Okay. I, I mean, <laughs> I'll just one, go one ahead of those and, games uh, definitely had a track editor. If it wasn't six, then it was five. <laughs> it was five. Five had one. And then it was been missing from six this entire time, and that's the what people. Entire time? Yeah, people that's were it? so upset about it. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I'll have to, I, I guess. Okay, we got some contention. We got yeah. some contention on the podcast. Were, were you just airing the correction music now? Yeah, just yeah. ahead of time. One just, of us is wrong. Just You're right. ahead yeah. of time. <laughs> one of us. Is wrong. <laughs> okay, so we should move on to actually some good, more good news. Deus Ex, Mankin Dividend, Mm-mm. pre-order no longer augmented. We did it. We, we did it. Mission Somebody accomplished. Have spoken. <laughs> yeah, I love stories like this where like everybody's internet complaining actually makes good. Uh, here's what's happening: is uh, if you missed that episode from two weeks ago, if you were pre-ordering Mankind Divided, if you were pre-ordering that game, you had you could do augments with it, and they were tiers. The more people who pre-order this game, the more tiers you unlock, <laughs> and in each new tier, you get a choice that you get to make. And so it was just all it was so much nonsense. The thing is, you were shown pre-order incentives that you had to pick from, and there were some that you just couldn't have. Uh, and that uh, got a lot of backlash. And so now, if you pre-order this game, you get everything. <laughs> as you should have. Yeah, as you should have. Yes, exactly. Thank Do you, Brad. Do people who augmented now get everything, too? Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Everybody not wins. anymore. Yeah, people don't like it when you can't get stuff. Yeah. People like it when you get extra stuff. Mm-hmm. They were presenting it as choices, but it was kind of just interpreted as like, wait, yeah. I want all of those things. Yeah. Uh, so now it's it's not only the pre-order, but it's also the day one edition. So my advice, do not pre-order. I bet people didn't. Yeah. And they saw the money. 
Because like, vote with your wallet every time. Day one editions last so long. Yeah. You, you, basically, that's a lot of pre-order incentives now. Is like, if you pre-order, you get this. Like, no, just go go to the store. It's there, and you get the day one edition box. Oh, I'm so sick of that saying day one edition on the boxes. Like Metal Gear. Yeah. I really hated when it says day zero. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen a few of those. I think mm. Call of Duty last year was day zero edition. Day yeah. zero? No. Yeah. Because you pre-ordered. Yeah. So it's uh, like, what is? The, it's like the day before it comes out is day zero. Yeah. It's like I bought this game before it came out. I'm gonna put out like a day negative eighteen version. That's like eighteen days before it comes out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you're just the biggest dummy if you buy yeah. that. Uh, so yeah, probably I gotta assume you'll be able to find a day one edition of this game on day one. So why don't you hang out and wait for reviews? Wait, those day negative eighteen editions already exist, kind of. What do, what do you mean? What? Oh, early access. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, oh, sure. yeah like, we've we've got day that's like, like day negative six hundred. Yeah. But no, I don't mean that early access. But uh, the like Forza and EA like give people like oh, the early access pre orders stuff, right? or the VIP edition thing. You know, oh, people will right, get right, right, five right. days early. Can you tell me about the Forza one? I I didn't know about this. Yeah. So if you got the VIP edition, which costs more money and give you extra stuff, um, then yeah, you were able to get in like the Thursday before rather than Tuesday. And I had to uh, digital download it? Like I didn't get the box early, right? Um, that I don't know. Okay. I Probably not. That was a very musical. Um, um, yeah, that was good. Um, 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 uh, so the VIP edition, I would get to play the game before anyone else. That's crazy to me. Uh, by the way, also with, with Deus Ex, uh, it is now Deus Ex. Uh, it is now uh, available to everyone on February 23rd, whether you pre-order or not. Whatever, cool. whatever tiers That's they the hit. That's the day before my birthday. Whee! Cool. Nice. This is, this is going to be a good <laughs> That's game. That's a good birthday game. I'm glad that all of this is behind them. Yeah. Just a Don't bunch do dumb stuff like that. It was dumb stuff, but like they handled it the right hey, way. Man, yeah, people, that's the best way people to do. People gonna try stuff. I I, I want yeah. people to try stuff. We'll try when bless it, you when it's wrong, that's, they go, oh, okay. try stuff that rewards. That was a dumb idea. Your, your yeah. base, not restricts them. Well, it's also weird too, and like this kind of thing is entirely on the marketing side. Has nothing to do with the development. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. They weren't a part of that yeah. at all. But I yeah. mean, if you, I could see, I could see in the room how this could s seem like a good idea because they're like, oh, our game is all about choices, about. You right. choose to do the stealth way like or the, the word, killing the way. The word choice is like the point of that meeting. They literally right. have the word choice like yeah. on a board. And they were like, <laughs> yeah. okay, guys, yeah. this is it. Like augments are big. Just just let that sink in, marketing people. Augments. You know, and there's the one guy in the room who's like, oh, I got it. You know, like, what do you get? Augment the pre-order. And then just like that guy. You they know? need to like yeah. start QAing these <laughs> ideas or something like that. But it's but I, I just I love the fact. I think it's great to live in an era where they can. Go, like you're saying, you can like try something and then be like immediately like, oops, sorry, okay, that was that was bad. We made a mistake. That's the era we've always lived in. Not really. This one in the, like the '90s, this wouldn't have happened. In like the EGM Game Pro era, where just like, you know, like the, the, the complaints would have never gotten back. The right, yeah. you write a letter and mail it. Yes, you know, people like, did do that. I know, but you can't. <laughs> but it but, seems but more, uh, more other people frequent aren't now that seeing those listen. letters. You know, it's yeah. like whereas like all the complaints, all the negativity around you know Deus Ex. We were talking about Arkham uh, Knight the other uh -huh. day, and it's like new DLC just came out, which you would think like suppose like this is a good thing, more DLC. Aren't you happy about this? And like yep. we're not actually because it's really small and it's confusing why you're uh, separating this way. So you want people to talk about the game post launch, and we're all talking about it negatively this is negatively impacting your game because everybody's you know poo-pooing like the last dlc that came out on the reverse end before launch it's just bad vibes like like all the time that we can pre-order this whole scheduled tier that you've released it's just gonna be complaining 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 the whole time and like you know smart marketing people you know maybe even prove that like ultimately they are smart you know they just misfired as opposed to just being like dumb idiots who had this dumb They're, like pre-order thing they stopped because they weren't making money that's why they weren't doing it. That's why they changed their idea. It was not a good idea. And it gave them bad publicity. I know the whole any publicity is good publicity. But if they they were not rewarding their fan base. Right. And that's a big problem. Like, Count you have to be loyal to your fan base. And, like, a lot of people love CDA Project Red because they're pretty loyal to their fan base. They're, like, good to their fans. It's just, like, a bad idea. Yeah. And they paid for it. Yeah. And they're like, oh, just kidding. Uh, I have a counter idea. Give us a counter idea. Let's hear it. What if stuff like this is all intentional? Like always. Oh my gosh. Like, what if they're I, like, yeah, okay, we're gonna do a specifically bad, like, like Crystal Pepsi. New Coke. New Coke. We're gonna put out a shitty thing. We're yep. gonna do a crappy augmented pre order because then when we change it and be like, oh, we listened to you, 
everyone's gonna pre-order. I'm everyone's gonna switch I mean, back to new to old coke. It's such a risk. This yeah, is like so patriots right now. I don't fun know, though. man. Yeah, I bet people do stuff like this more often theory. than we think it, they do. To me, it's like it's like the South Park where it was just like. George W. Bush was trying to convince everyone that he was smart enough to do 9/11. Mm -hmm. Like, just like I don't, I don't think that anyone's smart enough to know how there would be a backlash to this augmented pre-order. I can't give him that much credit. I mean, you could always just like seed things too. Yeah. It's like the markets, man. It's all just driven on fear. <laughs> no, it's. I mean, it is, but yeah. it is, but I think not at this level. I, I think that the video games industry isn't that intelligent to be able to work oh, yeah. things like that. Humans are garbage. Uh, but humans are, are garbage, but they're also great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they, they did something. This was an initiative on behalf of the marketing team. They sure. didn't, like, approach Deus Ex and were just like, oh, there's no collector's edition. There's no nothing. There's no, there's no reason to be excited or anything to pre-order whatever. Yeah. You know, they, like, put a thing forward, and they were, like, really proud of it. Yeah. You know? And then just like, whoa, I got this huge backlash and own up to it. So I'm proud of them. And I almost feel like now that everybody gets everything, I think they're – Losing a little more than they were planning on it. Oh, for sure. Yeah, which is kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. They're gonna take it because they want to have positive mind share. You yeah, know, they want it. They want everybody to love it. And I think they deserve which they it. should because we yeah. all said it's gonna be a great game. You know, yeah. it's like it's sad that something like this Mars. Yeah. you know, would have otherwise been conversations that we could be excited about the tech and the story and you know get back on track. It is really hard to say though. Mankind divided. Mankind divided. Mankind divided. Mankind dividend. There's like an extra D gets in there. Mankind divided. Yeah. It's like, never mind. Mankind divided. Mankind mm -hmm. divided. Mm -hmm. yep. Too many Ds. Mankind divided. All right, uh, so let's move on to, well, you're the one who started this conversation. Not going to yell it? No, that's I like fine. to I do different like deliveries. That. Oh, okay. that. that was a good one. I yeah. like that one. Um, he was hurt. This no. comes from <laughs> at Aussie Tangent. Do secondhand sales of games affect overall game profits, and do DLC offer a chance for companies to make more money from these sales? Uh, I mean, yes to both, but let's talk about it. Uh, do secondhand sales uh, affect overall game profits? This one I really wonder about. This Huber gives me a hard time for this. I don't like to buy games used, but I definitely like to trade them in, and Huber is very upset about that because he sees that as even just me taking money away from developers, not mm -hmm. just publishers, but- That's a little weird. I would say you're probably just losing money, but sure. Me losing money? Yeah. Wait, what should I do with them? Keep them on my shelf? That's losing money. <laughs> yeah, I mean, getting, getting $7 is better than not getting $7. Yeah, what I, do you mean I'm losing money, blood? I mean, yeah, I don't know. It just does, that, that doesn't feel like you're getting that enough value out of that. That game cost him $53 instead of 60. Yeah. Well, and then actually, so the argument I always like to make is that is, is that people who do trade in games have more money to spend on new games, and then they do get more money, and then that kind of thing. Yeah. I, I think mm -hmm. that used games help, but I'm curious if anyone here it, it takes that Huber stance of like, no, dude, used games are killing us. Uh, no. I don't, I don't think it's that extreme, but it definitely is, is taking profits away, um, but probably in a pretty large share because there are people that are just going to wait for. A used copy or mm -hmm. get that one that's you know six dollars less and oh it's been opened or it's got a scratch on the box i don't care you know that kind of thing but i mean like those people just wait for the game of the year sale edition anyway so it's like whatever what, what, do you, what, is, what do you mean it's like whatever i mean i don't know i guess the company would get 30 bucks instead of 60 if they bought the sale version six months later but like if you didn't put it on sale, that person just wouldn't ever play your game, probably. Yeah, yeah, that's what I think. Is I, I think it's not a well. It's the five dollars. It's the selling the used game for five dollars cheaper. That's the real sticky yeah. part. That's weird. Yeah, because I would rather spend five dollars to give it to the developer. Yeah, Do you I just don't like other people's hands no, no. on my stuff. I'm sure. absolutely okay with people selling games. They can do whatever they want with that game. They own it. What do you do personally, though? Uh, I usually keep them. I have sold games before, though. Which I don't ones? Feel, uh, let's see. I sold Resident Evil 5. So it's games you don't like is what it, you... I'm yeah. not going to play them anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm getting to that point where I, I don't have enough space anymore. And if I'm not going to yeah. play it, I have just let, I'm letting go of old games. Yeah. I like keeping like a small stack of games I freaking love. Yeah. All like all the 10s. The faves. Yeah. yeah. You keep yeah. the 10s. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Brandon, do you keep a library of all the games you've ever played? I don't think I've ever sold a game ever. Yeah. Whoa, dude. No, I, I mean, but I mean, we're we're both in this position where it's like, it's like, oh, ten years later, I might need that, <laughs> you know, yeah, right? Yeah, and yeah. I don't want to pay eighty dollars. I mean, order I, there, but there are so many games that. Uh, but I mean, our job kind of demands. Shadows that we, of the Empire yeah. for the N sixty four. I owned it. 
I don't know where it is now. <laughs> <It's so hard. laughs> I, I bought that game and yeah. never had any, you know, cause sure, to yeah. give it to anyone or, you know, and just somewhere in the, the GT shuffle and just uh, yeah. slipped through my fingers. But it's like, for me, it's like, I know I'm not going to play Resident Evil 5 anymore. And if I'm going to, I can play it on PC if I have to. So sometimes I'm fine with letting them go. Yeah. Uh, do you think... Do you think DLC is a good way for developers and publishers to curb that loss that they do get yes. from people buying their game used? They hope people will hold on to their game. Yeah, but I also think it's like, hey, if you buy that game used, let's say you bought Smash Bros. used, mm-hmm. and then you're on the store and you're like, oh, that new... DLC's uh, out. Yeah, it's two bucks for a map. I'll pay, I'll pay for that. Yeah, it's a way for them to make more money. It's of amazing. course it's a good idea for yeah, them. Yeah, it's more than zero, you know yeah, what I mean? Like absolutely. They make zero off of that, and now they make uh, whatever, 50 cents off of it. That's why they like season passes, because you're that guaranteed money if you buy it. Oh, they WB loves those season passes. Oh, they love it. <laughs> Was there a season pass for Mad Max? Uh, I don't think so. They haven't announced any DLC yeah. or more costumes or anything. No, nothing no, I that I know of. I think it's one one and done. Yeah, I think that game might be one and done. Hmm. But it's Is fun. that copy That's available? Good. Can I borrow that yet? Yeah, I'm gonna, yeah. I, fin- I finished it. Ian, all right, so I'm actually curious. Thank you for <laughs> this rude interruption. Why do you want to play Mad Max? Uh, because I like the movies. Do you think you'll play through the whole thing? No. Do you think? Do you think a lot of people? Sorry, this is such a weird tangent. This is an Aussie tangent. Um, well, you're the one who started the conversation. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, uh, <laughs> do you think that game? Oh, I just I lost it because we went on that tangent. Oh, do you think it'll? The Do you think that's what most people are playing it for? Is because they liked that movie? Yes. Some people, yeah. Yeah, I think there's a, a good portion of that. I mean, it has also gotten some good buzz since it released. Yeah. Yeah, I just. I mean, I, I've liked all the movies. I'm a big Mad Max fan. That but. kind of game, I wanted. I want it to do so well, and I don't know if it has. I yeah, I mean, really actually, well. in a weird way, you know, it's like, I, yeah, I kind of do want that not triple A game to be able to do well. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's like we should be able to have things that you know are 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 not just blowing it out in terms of budget. Be able to find an audience and get be appreciated. I think it did. I think it's doing pretty I think well. It, I think it Especially is probably is doing well, Especially coming out the same day as Metal Gear. I'm yeah, sure it did which fine. Which is a weird Wait, what do you idea. mean you're sure it did fine? I'm, well, I've seen a lot of buzz about it, A lot of people talking about playing it, having a good time. No, it got destroyed by Metal Gear the day it came out. Well, anything's going to get destroyed, but it yeah. did It did well for itself, what I'm saying. A lot of people have okay. been saying the PC port's actually really good. Yeah. Though. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Mad Max. I think that's a game that'll like just kind of sli- uh, sell consistently well for the rest of the year. I want that game to have cheat codes so I don't have to unlock all the stuff. <laughs> I want to just start oh, with all the stuff. That. Yeah. No. No, because I'm only going to play this game for like two hours. Yeah, that's okay. it's, a, it's unfortunate. Like, like those, I just want to see the, the game. The opening's really great, and the world's yeah. open. So you yeah. can, I think there's like, I think like the half, it's like a 50-50, like the top yeah, yeah. hemisphere is, Second is, half you have to is blocked to, off but, yeah. by the story. But uh, mm. there's a ton of places to run around. Yeah. You're just going to get trounced uh, by people. So does that game have any DLC for Ian, who is taking it for free? Nope. Oh. I wouldn't pay for it anyway, probably. Yeah, I'm just curious I mean, if there's unless, the option. Unless this game hits gold we're the, for some We're the problem, I really. It. I mean, now we need to address that. You know, like We just keep trading we, we games, get games with each other. for free, and then yep. we hand them out to each other for free. I mean, we're just... Just trying to make informed scum. opinions about games. Yeah, but we have Ben games. more, so he just balances yeah, he out. Totally, ben totally balances out. <laughs> but on the other hand, <laughs> or me like, and not giving games away. Yeah. On the other hand, like the more of us that play it, the more of us can talk about it. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, I think it doesn't super apply. It's our job to play games. No, we're costing the industry money. We're skim. We're out here telling people don't buy Tony Hawk Five. We're telling them don't pre-order games. I'm like, so we're telling them to buy games. Yeah, also. I'm like, play sure. Underdark. Underdark is awesome. All right, quick I plug just made for Underdark. What is that? It's a cool little RPG where you don't actually have to kill anything. You can Isn't like, that Underworld yeah. or under... Undertale. 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 Underdark. Yeah, um, Underworld is something Underdark. else. Underdark <laughs> is... Destructoid <laughs> and Giant Bomb gave Underdark it a 10. Underdark is from Dungeons and Dragons. Giant Bomb gave it a 10 out of 10. Dang. Undertale? Yep. Yeah. Undertale. It's a great game. There it is. Undertale. Sorry. Okay. Undertale. <laughs> I've been reading a lot of D and D about the Underdark. That's where the Drow come from. It's not often I go to Metacritic and see a ten for something I've never heard of in my life. Right, right. Undertale. What? I Undertale. thought it was like a glitch or something. I'm like reading the Giant Bomb review. I'm like, what? What is? No, it looks cool. Under what? Like the combat is like mini games. Yeah. Yeah, sort of. And you you can just talk to the monsters. Yeah, I mean, cool. it's precious. I, I think I want to. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I do like that one that you you go into a game and there's like a boss fight or something. It's like, oh, you don't have to do this. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, okay. Uh, I want to do one more. Thank you, Aussie Tangent. Let's do one more really quick. This is from Future Goku. Are you guys associated with those game theorists, guys? They have a show called GT Time or GT Live, and I don't know if it has anything to do with game trailers. Uh, Yeah, they have a show called GT Live. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, We actually worked out a deal with them where we're competing the two shows. 
Um, they're actually locked in a, in a tense bloodbath. Okay. Uh, all that of our we, lives are on the on the line. That's I can't a deal really, we worked I can't, out. Yeah, I can't really discuss the terms. <laughs> okay. But um, <laughs> what, not all of us are going to survive the end of the year. It's it's really it's going to come down. Yeah, game theory. The the, yeah, those they're going to crush us if they take GT live. Um, well, they already I, did. Yeah, they already took. I it. did. I met a great guy uh, 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 last year uh, that works at Gaming Trend. And uh, he and I started following him on Twitter, and he made a tweet or something like that. And he's a GT and something, and like uh, like you know like was just kidding, but like pounced on him. Just like, hey man, that's yeah. our turf. Yeah. We got GT time. Yeah. We got GT live. You can have oh, any other uh, words. GT Grid Turismo. We were talking yeah, yeah. about today. Yeah. Somebody um, somebody posted a, a, a standalone GT time thread for mm-hmm. like one of the past week's episodes. And a bunch of people came in and they're like, oh, this isn't about Gran Turismo. Oh. Yeah, right. Well, when we were at Spike, they, <laughs> yeah. had the G- they had their GT show. There wasn't Gran Turismo the game. It was just Gran, Gran Turismo. You know, like oh, that yeah. was an actual yeah. term. Yeah. You know, and so every time that would come up in a production sheet or something, I'm like, GT what? Oh, right. It's yeah. Like, so. We should change the name. No, the thing is, G- <laughs> the GT whole company are good letters. Just, <laughs> those are party blast. Those are party blast. Party. We're party blast We're now? called the party, party blast. blast. That's partyblast.com. It's about video games. Must be nice. Hey, dudes, if you ever saw the Shenmue reactions, that's Party Blast. (laughs) (laughs) We're all that. It's all the time, dude. (laughs) Yeah, it's gonna. The kids are gonna love it. YouTube Gold. Oh man. Uh, let's, that's it for while you're the one who started the conversation. Thank you, everyone uh, who sent us stuff. Mm -hmm. But we do have to move on. Uh, It is now officially time for bets. Uh, Here's what happened. Oh no, no, we'll do this week's bet, of course. Uh, Transformers Devastation releases on Tuesday. I'm very excited. At this point next week, what will be the percentage for the trophy acquired from on PlayStation 4 acquired from completing the game as Grimlock? Note, if there is no trophy for beating the game as Grimlock, everyone but me gets a point. <laughs> Brandon's nervous. Um, yeah, I gotta nervous. say... What? I really... This game better to deliver. Like I'll be kind of let down. Oh, it's gonna be so if it's good. Not good if it's somehow not good. Yeah, it I, looks so good. Yeah, I I think I think the only question, the only concern I have for this game would just be content, just how long the actual mm-hmm. mission is. But like what I played was rad. It's, I, like, sure, I, I I could see it being really cool. I should I, yeah I should proceed this by uh, the reason why I did that is because there's the achievements leaked mm-hmm. and there is one there are five for each character. You know, one for beat the game as oh so prime, you, beat the game as yeah. Bumblebee. So you're not just making a blind guess at achievements. You yeah. saw it, but it was leaked, so you yeah. don't know. How I was going to say that's, that's a list. really specific trophy. Yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. Do you just mm-hmm. make this up? No, Grimlock's one of the guys you can be. Nice. Yeah, yeah. It's just cool. one of the coolest you can Transformers. Definitely be Grimlock. Yeah. Yeah, and so uh, how many people will beat the game at? as Grimlock at this point next week on PlayStation 4. I am actually first to reveal this week. I think that 5.5% Oh, whoa. 5.5. Interesting. Yes, will beat the game as Grimlock. Wow. Yes. Go ahead, Brad. 7%. Ooh. Well, this is interesting, actually. Uh, I'm, I'm a lot Blake. higher, so I'm 18%. Oh, okay. Yeah, gosh, that's probably right. He's usually yeah? right. He's usually right. That's usually right. Okay. <laughs> Here comes Jones. Here well, comes Jones. here's Jones. Jones. The opposite end of the spectrum. 4%. 4%. Okay. okay. Let me lock that in. Lock down that, that I think, low I think end. Bumblebee for the win. I think Bumblebee is going to. So an Kyle option. shut out. It's going to it's gonna 5. like. 5.5. Yeah, I'm not in a good you spot. Pick Grimlock because he's kind of that middle of the road. You know, he's like. Grimlock is he, top. To he's, me, he's, he's not, the coolest he's, character. Okay. So you're just you're pulling he for the Grimlock. Coolest name. Here's the thing, though. Brad was talking before the show. We don't know if you have to unlock him or not. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. Don't th- uh, he was in the demo when I jumped in, and okay. there were characters yeah. that weren't in the demo when I played it at Comic Con, and he was in it. Well, so I, 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 I think, he, I think yeah. he starts out, yeah. Unlock Grimlock. Uh, so actually, th- I mean, that's part of the interesting thing is that about these bets is we don't know a lot about these games at this point, even sometimes days before the release. Mm-hmm. Case in point, let's talk about last week's bet. And he still wins every time. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater Five released this week, just on Tuesday, and then we. <laughs> We bet on what the Metacritic user score for Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5 would be. At this point last week, we didn't know how bad it was going to be. How crazy is that? Because I knew there might be problems, but I thought there was just going to be fan- like the user score is always higher than review scores. No, it's not, no, not, it's not usually. always. No, 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 no. I, most of the time, I see it because I'll just see people because like there's just be some people who just give it a ten, and well, like that just. I feel like usually a lot it's of people higher. give it a one as well. It depends uh, yeah. if it's yeah. exclusive or not. On the True, a that'll lot hurt times. it. If you're exclusive, you're going to get oh, a lot it's of zeros. Not on my system. Mark down. <laughs> yeah. Who was that guy? That's so. That's Angry millions. Fans. There's like millions Russian of that guy. guy? What voice yeah. was that? Mark down. Not on my system. Not on my Mark system. Down. Uh, here's here's what everybody bet. Or we're, we're betting on the Xbox One version of where would it be on Metacritic.com. The user score. Uh, Jones, you bet seven. 
He was he a was seven. He was, was betting like, on wow. the goodwill. He was yeah. betting on the goodwill of people who just are fans of the game. I like they were so hungry for Tony Hawk coming back. Yeah, they were just going to be all these fundamental things. Where it's like, well, it should, didn't have this mode, it didn't have that. I thought fans were going to be like, Tony Hawk's back. I don't care. You yeah, know? like I love this franchise. You're an idiot if you're expecting more of Tony Hawk. Uh, and the game was just bad enough to not even impress those people. <laughs> uh, my bet was 3.9 because of the price. Uh, Blair in the super seat uh, bet 4.3, a little higher. Blood, you bet 5, a little higher than that. The user score for the Xbox One version of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5 is 2.4. Wow. Uh, out of 10. It went up since I locked it. That's rough. But there's All I know is the Xbox, Xbox One. One. I was version. looking at PS4. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's 2.2. <laughs> oh whoa! So don't get the PS4 for better sure. on Xbox. Slightly <laughs> better on Xbox. They're just more discerning clientele. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh boy. boy. There it <laughs> is. Oh boy. Uh, oh boy. So that means that I win that bet, uh, not proudly. Nice. I mean, we were still all overestimating. We were too still much all faith. Far away. Oh my gosh. Too much faith in Tony Hawk. Sweet Brandon. <laughs> trying to be I'm a good the guy. eternal optimist. Yes. <laughs> Sweet Brandon. Sweet Brandon. <laughs> so, yeah. Sweet Brandon. But I, I want that emote like Rosie yeah. Cheese. Isn't like, that crazy though? Like Sweet, sweet Brandon. I love living in this time right now where for for Transformers where we all say, Oh, I hope it's good. We still don't know if that game is good or not. But see, I'm like pessimistic Brandon here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Brandon's gonna lose too. It doesn't matter. You don't know, it could be it could be dreadful. It could be people starting. I will make a no. bet on top of the bet that I will lose this bet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Brandon wants to do a side bet that he's going to lose the bet. So wait a minute. That means if he wins, he loses that bet. No, this so isn't he GT. This, get is any a, this is a side bet. Side oh, bet. Okay. This is a bet on the GT bet. Side bet on mm. the GT bet. All right, Brandon, if you win that bet, we'll give you another lightning bolt. You'll have two okay. lightning bolts. Okay. Whoa. No, no, is that no. all it takes? No, no, no. If I see wins, a pity. Wait, am I doubling down oh, lightning oh, bolts? If, if I lose, loses. I lose the lightning bolt. But if I win, I get t- another one. No, I like no, that. No. You gotta have a stake. If you win I'm the not real use bet, either of you those lose lightning bolts. the side bet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so what, what does he get if he loses the side bet, though? What is the punishment? So if he wins the regular bet, he, if he wins the regular bet, he gets his points, but right. he'll lose the side so bet. He loses the lightning bolt. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So okay. Are down. you willing to put your lightning bolt on the line? <laughs> he doesn't even care about the lightning, the lightning bolt either. Okay. If he All loses, right. no toy box Tuesday. No. Right. Stop. Yeah. yeah that's, that <laughs> high stakes. Hey, come on, man. Let's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. not fly off the handle. <laughs> there are twelve people waiting for that. Okay. Uh, so that is the episode for this week. Just kidding. Uh, nine. Man. Just kidding. Uh, uh, as the winner of that bet, uh, I now have the rights and responsibility to tell everyone my Twitter name. Uh, to promote a show, to do any final, the final word, which Blood, you did really great with last week, and then my trademark sign off. Uh, the uh, My Twitter handle, of course, is at Kyle Bossman. Uh, the, the video I want to promote is this week's episode of The Final Bossman. Uh, it's just called uh, Four Things I've Learned from Mario Maker. There's nothing else special really beside that, uh, nope. but it's just about Mario Maker. Really good episode. Standard, boring just episode. Standard episode of Final so Bossman. So much canon. There's a little bit of canon involved in it, but uh, it's bo- it's not it's boring. Fillers it's not, over. It's everybody. not good that canon. Is, that actually might be the like, fillers over. It's crazy. D- d- everyone behind the scenes, Brad only watches the episodes of Final Bossman that have canon. That's in them. true. <laughs> I ain't wasting my time with that filler. Oh my god. But he, he likes the canon. At I least. like the canon. Yeah, so I'm invested. Anytime there's actually like lore in a Final Bossman episode, Brad is in. Dude, what? Let's do let's do Final Bossman the movie where we take all canon. <laughs> And string it all together in one big long thing. I bet you a lot of people would watch that. It'd I be watched, hilarious. It'd be great. I watched me. the Smosh movie last weekend. Why? Oh, God, really? And Why? it's funny. It starts with, like, Defy Media. It's so, like, <laughs> weird. It was because it was, like, on the front page of Netflix, and I'm like, oh. It's on Netflix? Right. Yeah. I will probably watch it, too. I'll probably. Yeah, yeah so I figured, you know, I, I, should, <laughs> I should watch the movies that Defy Media is making. Is it good? It's very bad. <laughs> it's very, very bad, but I liked it. <laughs> well, you, you like really bad stuff. Yeah, yeah, you have terrible taste. Like, if I were a film reviewer, I would give it a half star for sure. But I like it. I think it's. But I here's get the it. thing: like with a movie like that, it is so for that fan base. Yeah, exactly. That it doesn't matter. Mm. Yeah, it's gonna crush. Yeah, I'm sure there's for like that fan base. an inside joke right. every other yeah. minute. And in the weird, in a weird way, like it speaks it it says a thing in movies that like other movies wouldn't touch because it is so stupid but it is unique in that way i don't know it's do you know fred are you familiar with fred i'm not youtube is that kid that screams all the time yeah the kid who's got like super high-pitched voice and it's like crazy spunky like youtube guy kind of like that yeah but it's just like youtube sensation guy named fred Mm -hmm. that really blew up on uh, i think nickelodeon picked him up 
uh, and give him his own show or something like that. Hmm. The man has Whoa. a film trilogy. <laughs> Let's go to a Netflix. trilogy of Fred? And I was like, oh yeah, the Fred movie. And it was like Fred 2, Fred, <laughs> Fred 3. three. Oh and Fred 3 was gosh. like Halloween themed. <laughs> so I watched like, it. Awesome. He's like, so, like I watched it. Like, you, can, you know, you can go like frame by frame on Netflix. So you can actually like kind of watch the movie and figure out like what scene you're on. I just watched it that way. And I was like, this is fantastic. <laughs> you know, like, oh my just gosh. trying to discern the plot of Fred 3. Like just by frames, like going by. <laughs> Enjoyed it. I know. <gasps> Thank you, it's Netflix. It's so funny how little of the internet I know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's a really funny Onion article less. where it's that just came out the other day where it's just like, who the fuck is this now? And it's about like one of these YouTube guys. That's a good headline though, yeah. Uh, and like the whole article is just like, this is, he has 7 million followers. You've never heard of him. You're old. Yep. Like, who, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, look forward to the final Bossman movie. Please be uh, excited. Yeah, uh, three weeks. I'll use that for my final word. Uh, and then my trademark sign off is, of course, tomorrow is forever all ours. I love. What? <laughs> <laughs>